So I popped into a local coffee shop and it was really comfortable. It had all kinds of background music. It's kind of like a library. So I kind of felt self-conscious having my camera out there filming me when I was sketching it. So I just took these pictures, had myself a really delicious cookie with a peppermint mocha latte. And I used the Tombow to just quickly sketch what is there. And then I brought it back home and chose the colors to use. Now, here's the paint that I'm going to use. It's a Windsor Newton, and I'm only going to use three colors. I'm going to be using cadmium yellow, burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue. I just love that blue. And doing that, then it's kind of all the three primary colors, and that will give me a little bit of a free reign of creating other colors like the green and the walls and that counter space and um, I'll be able to mix some things to kind of lighten making it not quite as true of a color but it'll still stay true to the three colors that I have because there will all be a root of it. The two paint brushes that I'm going to use are a round brush not a very big one, and I'm going to use a, um, a thin brush and a rigger. And then one, um, before, um, what I did is I sketched it first with a Tombow. I used this end over here to sketch just the overall layout. Later on, um, at the very last, I'll use the uh, brush pen part of it to give it some texture and also some depth and shadows. I also used these two pens. They're water uh, proof pens and this one here is a 0 .1, 0 .01 and that's what I use to quickly sketch over the Tombow sketch just to kind of get the coloring book set up where I'm ready to put the colors on with the watercolor. And then later on at the very end I highlighted a few edges with the same type of pen. It's, it's also waterproof and it's a .05, a little wider of, of pens. So here's what the paint colors look like when they're on a paper. The cadmium yellow looks like this. And the burnt sienna looks like this. I'll make that a little bit more intense. And the ultramarine, oh yeah, the blue looks like this. Look how vibrant that is. Isn't that cool? And then what I'll do later is I will add some of the... Uh, Cat, the ultra ultramarine with the cadmium yellow and I'll make myself a little bit of green. And it looks like this. And I used that for the walls and I used that for that counter and I used um, the blue. What I did, I used that for most anywhere that I saw a black surface. I didn't use any black paint. I did use the black pen to kind of highlight edges, but I am, did not use black paint. So the blue is where the black is. Other ones are kind of literal. I'm using the um, burnt sienna for the floor and also for the board that's going across the ceiling and the column on the far left to kind of frame it a bit. Also, there's a paint a painting in a frame in the back wall to the right, and I used the burnt sienna for that frame. And uh, the yellow is something I pretty much added to the blue. I didn't use direct yellow in really anywhere. I used that to make the green. So starting with the painting, um, I uh, used, like I said before, I used the blue wherever I saw black. And uh, I just started with the back wall paper. And you can see it, there's a lot of texture 
in there. And so I just started putting all that in there and that's going to be kind of the focal point of the whole uh, drawing is it's going to draw people's eyes to the kind of the busyness of that wallpaper. I'm using a rigger because it's almost like a pen. You can put a little color on the end of that paintbrush and just pin it on to wherever you want. So uh, while I had the, the blue paint on the brush, I started putting all these little candle-like holders. The sockets were black around those round um, chandeliers and uh, just started putting the indication of what's holding those light bulbs around those sockets, around those circles. I also noticed that the stem of the seat over there was black or a dark color. So I, well, just using the dark blue first, I just went ahead and popped it uh, in the blue. Now, oftentimes um, I and other people will use the lighter colors and then build on top of it. But I was just jumping in with both feet and I decided to go ahead and give the accent first and then kind of let it blend out from there. The painting had a little bit of a blue in it also, so I just kind of kind of washed a little bit of blue in the painting area. And outside the window was the uh, soffit of the store itself kind of peeking on in on the top of the window view and so I'm indicating that and below that, below that was some kind of a hanging pendant. Maybe it was a light or lantern, I don't know. And uh, so I just went ahead and sketched that very really roughly and loosely. Using the round brush, I used the burnt sienna just to kind of almost wash a dry wash onto the floor just to kind of give it a little bit of texture. And I kind of liked how the, the paint kind of puddled here and there because the floor is not going to be exactly the same color and it kind of lets the, the paint itself do whatever it wants to do to express some lights and darks and textures. Using the same Sienna, I used uh, that paint to uh, paint around that picture that was blue and the frame was kind of a sienna color and so I just used it used that color for the paint frame. Also those circles along the chandeliers looked like that needed a little bit of burnt sienna too so I popped some of that color there. And the fireplace, and they didn't really have a fireplace, it was a virtual one and a um, TV screen. And that too had a little bit of a burnt sienna color where the fire was. I needed a little bit of green, so this is where I'm mixing the uh, blue with the yellow. Um, and with this, I'm going to be able to paint some of the wall and also painting, paint that counter space on the center right of the image.
Again, using the round brush and kind of the side of it, it allows me to be able to put some color on a broader area without really being too pinpointy and too exact. It looked like the countertop was not only just green, but it had a little bit more blue into it. And uh, I added a little blue there to kind of give it a little bit more contrast to the walls. And the chair needed a little bit of color. It was a reddish chair. Um, and I used the, the paint that I chose. I used the burnt sienna to kind of indicate that and also the legs of that little table that's holding the TV. And I noticed that in between those legs of the table holding the TV was also, I could see past that and see the wall. So I had to remix my green a bit in order to match some of the green wall that I had already painted around there. Got a little bit too far down. So it's good to have a napkin nearby to be able to pick up some of the paint you don't want to stay. So remember, when you're doing your painting and you're sketching, it doesn't have to be exact. It's you expressing what you see and what you feel. And so it's all worth it. It can be kind of like a documentary or a diary, a picture diary of places you've been and things you thought. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. If you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up and uh, let me know kind of what your comments are about how you do your sketching. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.